Okay, so I've got a, another scan tool here that we're going to do a quick review on. This was sent to me by CG Solit, I think is the way you pronounce that. I've got another one of their scan tools that I've had for years. And I say scan tool, the one I've got is more closer to what I would consider a code reader than a scan tool. This is supposed to be a full-fledged scan tool. Now they did send this to me for free. But we're going to plug it in. I have not even taken it out of the box yet. We're going to unbox it, uh, or unwrap it, rather, and we're going to plug it in. I've got a 2007 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, this is an all-system scan tool, um, so it should scan all the modules that's on this vehicle, and then we're going to see what kind of uh, special functions, I guess, uh, it's got. It's supposed to have, I believe, how many reset functions? Uh, okay, it says 20 plus frequently performed service oil, ABS bleeding, electronic parking brake, battery uh, management, SAS. Anyway, let's get it out of the package here and let's uh, see what it what it looks like. Yeah, the first thing you'll notice is it does have a case. So, I've, whoops, sorry. I've mentioned this in my other videos that I like things that have their own case. The one thing that's irritating is when you're trying to figure out how to store or how to uh, organize your you know a scan tool and you got cords and everything you know flopping everywhere it's nice to have a, a, a case to be able to store it all in so it does have a manual right here Of course, this is a uh, what I call a tethered scanner, um, meaning you got to plug it in, it, and it is lifetime free updates, so you don't have to worry about ever paying for any kind of updates. Okay, this has got uh, I'm not sure what you, they call that style USB uh, connection. I don't think it's micro. It, it's it's right before the micro, I think, but that's how you would update it. Uh, so it should have a, yeah, it's got a cord here. There's your USB cord. Then you've got your cord here to uh, plug it into the OVD port. Uh, I do not believe it is battery powered. That's probably going to be powered by the OBD port itself which is nice because this is the type of scan tool that that I always think is good to just keep in the car whether you keep in the console you know storage compartment or whatever uh, that way even if it's a year before you need it you're not gonna have to worry about the batteries being dead so I've got the Jeep turned on uh, out there so I just plugged the unit in let me give you a shot of the control panel here. Function keys, you got a back, you got a basically an enter button, the navigation buttons, you got a help button there. There's the front of the unit. I'm going to try to set this up in a way that it will stay. Then I'm going to zoom in for you. Get the camera set up better. Um, history, I'm sure, is as you plug it into cars, it's going to have a memory of which cars you plug it into. That way you can go back and uh, see what you've done. Of course, it's supposed to be auto VIN capable, so it should detect the VIN. There's uh, OBD2, diagnostic, maintenance, which is where your... Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. This is where your, what they call memory reset functions are and we'll just scroll down through them so you got I'm not going to read them all off but replace airbag ECU there's the battery there's the ABS CVT there's uh, DPF for you diesel guys clutch adaption change tire size um, electro electronic parking brake EVAP gear learn headlamp injector odometer oil reset prime fuel pump seat matching TCM oil, I guess that's your oil reset. Steering angle. 
turbo transmission learn TP TPS Windows so it's I mean looks uh, looks like a capable tool there so let's go back of course you got settings we'll go into settings just to see what language unit shortcuts beep okay let's go back data manager so apparently you can record probably not going to have nothing on it because I haven't done anything with it yet but you can record graphs there's the update feature if you had it plugged into the computer you'll be able to update it so let's let's try the auto VIN first let's see how that works Okay, automatic VIN, of course you can manually put in the VIN. Okay, it, so it did detect the VIN. I'm going to hit F3. And remember this is a 2007 Jeep Wrangler. And there that is. We're going to hit F1 for OK. Uh, we'll go ahead and do quick scan. Control modules would be where you could manually select which module you want to go in uh, into. We're just going to do a quick scan and see what all it picks up okay executes yeah 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 f3 i don't i can't remember how many modules this jeep has this was my son's uh jeep and uh and i've i've scanned it before i just can't remember how many how many modules it's got so we're gonna we're gonna see again this is an all system so if you've got you know 21 modules this is supposed to be able to detect and show you all 21 modules so we got some faults let's take a look at that well we'll do report so it does have a report feature which is nice the report feature on these scan tools instead of you having to go into each individual module and take a look at what faults you've got you can just hit report and it shows you all the faults you know what module has got what fault so as we scroll down through here you can see we got one fault on the power power train control module instrument cluster and I'm assuming when we get down here we're going to start seeing yep I've seen this one before on this Jeep I think the alternator is starting to go out on this we we don't get a light but every now and then I'll see this uh, 622 fault instrument cluster rear defrost switch request And that was probably because I had the actual uh, AC module unplugged from this Jeep and I had the key on to do some testing. I probably never did. In fact, I know I didn't go in and clear anything. Right low beam. And there's lights. So there's, there's that. So um, I'm going to hit the back key and just go back. I'm going to go ahead and hit erase. I'm going to hit F1. And then F3 for OK. And we're going to see if it'll clear all the faults on all those modules. Try to get this more level. Bothering me. Okay, so I'm going to hit the back. Uh, actually, no. How many modules we got here? Six? Yeah, so there's six modules on this 2007 Jeep. We're just going to go into the powertrain and we're going to read all the uh, data pids and see what how that works. We'll check out the graphing and uh, then we'll be done. This, I believe, is CG Solit's top of the line scan tool it's a budget scan tool very very affordable so we've already read the codes there's the clear codes let's see what ECU information has normally that's all the detailed information about the ECU itself part number and all that hardware version so yeah that's what it is Okay, live data freeze frame event data ECU config information. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's got that's showing how the uh, ECU is set up for this particular vehicle. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go up to live data. 
takes a little while to actually populate the the data pids but that's okay it got there so here's the data pids you can obviously select which ones you know if you if you want to actually just select a you know five or six of them to look at you can do that or you can select all of them hit F1 then I'm going to hit F3 and that's going to list every, every data pid that this is showing for this vehicle and there we go Engine's not running right now, so I'm just scrolling down trying to find something because I want to see if we can graph something. You know what? We'll just, there's not going to be any movement here, but I'm going to hit F2 so we can look at the graph, see what it's going to show. And you can see the line shooting across there. I mean, it looks pretty smooth just for a straight line. Um, you can do multi graph, merge graph. So, if you hit F1, it's going to be a single graph, and then that's probably, yeah. Whoop. Sorry about that, fellas. All right. So, let's go ahead and back out of that. You know, I think, oh, you know what? The one thing I wanted to do. So, there's all the live data. Of course, you've got your freeze frame, event data. Let's go back. Because the one thing... Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. That I want to uh, check. If you go to OBD2. This should be. Where. Uh, yeah. There's your uh, monitors. So that's how you get to those. Jeep Chrysler, go back again. There's all your your generic OBD2. Diagnostic, what is diagnostic? Okay, that's where you're going to manually go in, select uh, American car, Asian, China, Europe, and then you're going to go through and you're going to manually select whatever kind of car that you're working on. But what I wanted to get down to was maintenance. We'll see if it will actually change the tire size. What, what other options we got? We got on this. I'm trying to think what we can do to this particular vehicle. It does not have electronic parking brake, odometer, oil reset. I think the only option we're going to have is change tire size. So let's see if it'll let us do that on this Jeep. I'm not actually going to change the tire size, but we're going to see if that option's there. And I didn't see Jeep specifically, but Jeep is a Chrysler product. So we're just going to go with Chrysler. We'll do Smart Bin. We're going to hit F1 for OK. Program tire size. Okay, we're going to hit. And my other scan tools will give us a list of the available tire sizes um, that was available whenever the vehicle was made, was manufactured. This function is to be used to program the tire size into the TPM or TIPM, T I P M. We're going to hit F3. Current, and it, it's an unknown tire size because I've actually got. Uh, 33 inch tires on it and I had to use a programmer to program the 33 inch tires so it's it's an unknown tire size because it's not in the computer the database choose the new tire size and press OK so drop down F1 completed let's take a look at the drop down there's all the tire sizes 
so you could go through and figure out what different uh, sizes these tires are as far as height and yeah you could program them in, in there and have have your speedo and a lot of people fail to realize that your tire size also affects your shift points for the transmission so if you want your transmission to shift right after you put different size tires on you, you can take care of that with, with this scan tool anyway and I think that's about it it's got graphing lifetime updates it's reasonably priced uh, anyway that's it got a case so you know if you guys need a budget scan tool and if you're looking for one want to know what kind of capabilities it's got this is it anyway you guys take care we'll talk to you later